What's up, yo? It's your boy Max Money, the Fernando Ever Crew, and today we are not gonna do a reaction video. How about that? So, for everyone that hates reaction videos, this one's for you, and for everyone that loves my reaction videos, I'm sorry, there will be more, okay? So today we're going over the top 10 footwork mistakes and how you can fix them. Let's go. All right, number one is switch your arms through the back, okay? So that looks like this, okay? So if I'm like this, I'm gonna keep my arms down here and I, and I switch my legs and I switch like this, okay? Or for a lot of people to go like this. They bring their arm down like that, okay? Now that, why that's a bad mistake is because it's pulling your weight backwards where you want your weight to be forwards and it's slowing down your footwork and it's taking away from valuable time that you could be doing other things like going fast and putting power in. You can't generate much power when both your arms are back here. You're in the wrong position to generate power from, okay? So what you want to do to fix that is rather than bring your hand down like this through your body, okay? You want to bring your arms down always like this through your chest, okay? So let's say I'm doing a switch like a Russian kick, okay? So I'm going here, switch to here. So what a mistake that I see a lot of people do is they go like this, boom, back, boom, back. They keep their arms always in this positioning. You never want to keep your arms here. You always keep one in front of you like this, okay? Keep it in front because then you can throw it down which helps propel you over, yes? So always whip your arms through your chest, yeah? So let's take that same switch drill we just did. So here, not this. Instead, you're gonna, even if you're not gonna hop, you're still gonna push through. So let's do no hop and then hopping. So no hopping, you're gonna bring this arm out and you're gonna swing it to the front, boom, like this. Then you're gonna come to the other side, hand down, swing it to the front, okay? Swing it back, swing it back. Number two, with a hop, we're gonna go here, not this, mistake, okay? Instead, you're gonna go here, you're gonna hop through, you're gonna swing your arm through your chest, back to your Russian, then to here. So you're gonna go one, down. Now, rather than holding the Russian, you swing it to the other side, boom, like this, boom, 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 okay? Even if we're doing circular stuff like this, same thing. When I go circle sweeps, okay? I'm gonna go same arm, swing down. Swing down versus this, yes? So that's mistake number one. All right, number two is your choppy footwork. So a lot of people have choppy footwork because they're not using their circles, okay? Majority of our base footwork is circular footwork. Majority of breaking footwork period is circular. We always generate our power and everything from the circles. People that have really nice footwork, they do this. When it's front and back, it becomes a choppy style. Is this wrong? No, but for a fundamental base style, I believe it is. So how to know if you've got choppy footwork is one, if you're not bringing your legs all the way circular around. So if you're not bringing your legs out here or out here or out here, okay? If instead you're bringing your leg out starting from here, starting from here, okay? That's choppy footwork because you're going then like this, right? It becomes that chop motion. Boom, boom, it looks like a cut. Instead of this circular motion like that, okay? So even for something like a two-step where you could fight, oh no, but you need to have your footwork go straight, straight, straight. It still doesn't really go straight, straight, straight. It still goes circular with it. Because if you watch, I'm gonna show you straight on, okay? This is straight on. Versus sweep and circle. So if you notice, I still have that circular sweep in there at the moment, okay? So again, this is choppy. Okay, if you're, or even if you're going up like this, or whatever, choppy. Circle, you should always start from the back, front. So you're gonna go here, bring it around to the front, squat on the side, start from the side of your foot, bring it to the front, in. Then cross it all the way around, in. Cross it all the way, even here, in. So around, hit, around, hit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just like that. Number three, tying right into your choppy footwork, that's not activating your hips, okay? So even if you have an understanding of this, I see a lot of people go like this, okay? They go here, they're like, yeah, I get it, I get it. But they're not getting where it's coming from. The root of your sweep is your hip, okay? You're activating your hip to swing your leg out. So it's just like if you're doing a kick, okay? It's not a kick from the bottom of your leg, like this, is a kick from your hip, like this. So you have to activate your hip to bring down your leg to circle it out. If you don't activate your hip, it's not gonna travel down to your foot and to your leg, okay? So it's really important that you start with activating your hip for your sweeps, okay? Activate your hip, and then everything else is gonna get a propel way quicker, and it's gonna be way more powerful at the end result. So now, rather than starting like this, 
and then swinging, okay, like this, because if you, you can go like this and do this, and I'm still not using my hip. I'm not using my hip, I'm not using my hip. This is why when I get like hip flexor injuries, I'm not able to do footwork because my footwork is pretty powerful. When I use it, I'm using my hips to activate my sweeps. So again, your hip activation is everything. So from here, I want to do the whole sweep now. So don't start here anymore. Start from here. So you're going to go here, swing like that, okay? So that sharp, fast twitch motion here, out and around. So slow motion, looks like this, front, okay? And then swing around. Now obviously it's awkward to stop it in the middle. So let's go all the way through. Activate, one, like that. Activate your hip. Swing, boom, you're more powerful. Swing, swing. You can do this for anything you want. Even with my coffee grinder, my CC, anything that has your footwork going in a circular position, use your hips to activate the sweep, always, okay? And it's so important because so many people are making the mistake of not activating their hips so their legs are barely being used. So a lot of people are missing out on so much potential from not activating their hips because again, your hips are at the top of your leg. You need to use them to activate your full power and your full potential of your leg. And if you don't activate that first, it's not gonna travel down and complete your sweep. Okay, number four, hoppy footwork, okay? So a lot of people, when I tell them to go faster, they start hopping their feet, okay? So for instance, a good example would be like, let's take like an eight step or a 12 step or scrambled eggs or whatever you wanna call it, okay? Going like this. If I tell someone to go faster, a lot of times they start going like this. Okay, they're like, okay, I'm going as fast as I can, I'm going as fast as I can. But what they're doing is their mind is telling them, oh, to go faster, you must jump, right? But in reality, you actually want to sink into it. But getting closer to it does not feel like you're going to go faster. You want to go up more. Because we think generate power, go up, elevate off the ground, right? Run faster, go, 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 go. But instead, it's like if you're running down an escalator or stairs. If you squat and you bend down a little bit and you bring your legs down faster, you're actually going to go faster. Same, excuse me, with footwork. If you bring your body lower and you step faster, you will actually be able to get to that position faster, okay? So again, if I'm hopping just like this, fast as I can, fast as I can, versus if I just step, I can go way faster. Same with back here. Let's take another step. I go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's hop. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now no hop. Same with up here. Okay, standing up. I go one, two, three, one, two, three. Hop. No hop. See what I'm saying? So rather than hopping, dig into the ground a bit more. Lower your body, lower it, and go faster. Same with here. Hop. Hop, instead of hopping, sink a little bit down, bring your leg out fast to the position, or like fast, bring it in. Okay? No hop. So hopping, no hop. Hear that, okay? The way you do that is by literally going faster. Just go faster. Drill this, slow, faster. Faster, etc. Okay, number five goes right into this last one we just did, which is not using your hips, okay? So we learned how to activate your hips for your front sweeps, but what about activating your hips for your twisting, okay? We've got your power. Now I want to talk about your literal hip twist, like this, okay? So let's go back to that eight step and that three step at the back we did here, okay? So this. Even if I go as quick as I can, if I'm not twisting my hips, I'm not actually giving my body the, the most optimal position to step from. But if I twist my hips here as I step, then my body can go straight line, okay? Think like a straight line. Think like walking through a maze, okay? If I walk through a maze and I'm always facing front, but I have to go this way and up here, I'll give you an example. Okay, so let's say problem. I'm here, I have to get to here, to here, okay? I could go one, two, turn, turn, step, step. Makes no sense though. If I pivot my hips and I use our body anatomy that we have as humans to just zigzag around, I can get to a problem, right? If I just twist, twist around. I can walk there super fast by just 
getting my body in the angle that works best for it, to go around it. Same thing with footwork, we're going down here. If we step here and back to here, we're not able to generate as much power because we're trying to get a front back motion like this, but in a sideways, so we're going like this. Doesn't make sense. But if we go here with it, we use our body like it's supposed to be used, then we can generate more power, which allows us to move faster and cleaner. So we're here. When you, whenever you step in a position, use your hips to twist yourself into that position. So let's say I'm going here. Step, not like this. Twist, then go backwards. Step, again, not straight down. Twist, go back. Twist, twist, twist. Rather than your foot lead the step, allow your hip to make way for your step. So if you move your hip right before you step, then suddenly you know exactly what you're doing because your body's just stepping forwards now. It should go like this. But you're twisting the points of it, but you're twisting your hips. So if these are your hips, and I go like this, if I twist it, it's not going like this. Twist it, it's not going like this. This is front. So think of it of making a bunch of new fronts, okay? If it's a lot easier to step front than it is to step sideways while I'm trying to step front, if that makes sense. So now let's go back to that eight step or around the world. Okay, so you're here. You cross. But again, when you cross, twist your hip sideways. Then you go center, reset, twist, center, twist, center, twist. Center, twist wherever you're stepping. Then you get that kind of a step, okay? Same with if I'm doing like a 10 step or whatever. Twist, step through. Twist, twist. All right, next one. This is a very important one. A lot of people don't talk about it. And this is improper knee and foot placement, okay? So when you're in a squat or wherever you are, your feet should always be this nice distance apart, okay? You never want to be right next to each other like this. You never want your knees super wide like this. You don't want them like this. Unless you're doing some weird creative footwork, you shouldn't be doing it that way, okay? So once you figure out your knee placement, okay? This should be one line like this, yeah? It should have this nice aesthetic V going inwards like this. Always, again, diagonal because we're sweeping diagonal. We don't want it front like that. We don't want it wide. We want it to be right in that middle position. Those 75 degrees kind of angles, okay? To the corners of the room. Yeah? Next is your knees. Your knees dictate where your feet go. So if your knees are facing downwards, your weight is off balance now. If it's backwards, your weight's off balance now, okay? You want to be solid in that center position. Remember, your knees for basic footwork should always be facing straight on, as if there's like two arrows pointing out from your kneecaps, boom, boom, to the sides, okay? Because then when you're sweeping, if I'm trying to sweep like this, I, I'm, I'm gonna fall, my, my weight makes no sense. Because as soon as I'm gonna go onto that one foot, I'm suddenly trying to hold this in between position. But if my, and my, if my knee's down here, I go off, I'm gonna fall forwards. So a good way to test it is by bringing your knees straight on, okay? Bring one foot out. Can you balance it? Now try going backwards. Do you fall? Probably wrong position. Do you go forwards too much? Step, kind of falling forwards too much, okay? So I want you to try that. Make sure you have Proper knee placement, very important. Next one, going off improper placement, we're talking about your arms, okay? Because we have our arms, we have our legs, and we have our feet, etc. So if you don't know where to place your arms, it's also gonna cause a lot of issues. So the rule of thumb for me is always directly behind your foot, straight backwards, diagonal to the side, okay? So you always wanna shift that line out. Boom, boom, like this. Very important. So you wanna be able to shift your weight onto that. You know what I mean? You should have it that far out. So if your arms are like here, nice and close, where is your weight right now? It's on your center, right? So you need to be transferred over here. We're just gonna translate to the next one. We're just gonna kind of merge them together. So this is gonna be uh, two of the mistakes in one because it just makes more sense to, to talk about it together. And that's not knowing where your weight is, okay? So we're gonna talk about them together. Because number one, okay, you don't know where your hands are going down. You don't, you put them down here, put them down here. Well, the issue is you put them down here, you're gonna cut off all this range of motion you have. You're gonna step on your hands, it's gonna hurt, okay? Or if you're here, you're trying to sweep back, you're not gonna have room to bring it underneath. So you have to always, again, know where your hand is. Again, straight backwards to the side, always behind you. Never put them down here. So, because then when people do footwork and stuff, they're trying to do whatever, they're gonna get caught on their hands. So again, behind you, don't put them in front, don't put them beside, behind to the side, behind to the side, behind to the side. Now the second one going off that is, your, is not knowing where your weight is. 
why this is so important and why these kind of go and correlate together is because a really easy way to test this is if you bring your hand down here, does your weight need to be in your arm right now? If the answer is no, then it's probably in the wrong position. What about here? No. Here? Nope. You could justify no here, but as soon as you put it this far away, you feel your weight shift there. That's probably telling you that it's a good thing, okay? So then you wanna really commit and lean into that to the point where, if you notice, I'm gonna lean, my weight's actually gonna naturally come off this back foot, which is good, because that's telling me it's prepping, okay, to go. And this is the same mythology with ballroom dance, okay? When you're, when you're a lead in ballroom dancing and you're falling, you have to always go off of this weight transferring. So you're reading where your weight should be going. So let's say I'm gonna step and the woman's foot's right here, I'm gonna lean onto this foot to tell her that this foot should come clear. So then when I step through it, she's gonna naturally step back. And then if I want her to come back towards me, I lean my way to this and I go through there. So now I want you to try that same mythology, but with your body placement, okay? So let's say you wanna tell your body, this leg's getting ready. So you're gonna shift your weight all the way here until this, bo this body part's completely free. Then you can do whatever you want with it. Same thing, but let's say I wanted to go into like an air freeze. I would go all the way up here. Transfer all my way here, now this is free, okay? If I wanna to go to a side freeze, shift it all the way here to this. Now, that was all kind of very broad examples, but let's bring it to a bit of footwork because that's what we're doing right now. So why is this important with footwork? Well, number one, if you don't know where your weight is, you're gonna be crashing unclean and it's not gonna be, and you're not gonna be using and abusing the full potential that you have with your movement, okay? But if you can bring your weight all the way over to one side, let's say you wanna do a threading coffee grinder, if you don't know how to bring all your weight to this arm and this side, you're not gonna have time. You're gonna crash in on this side. Everything's gonna go down really fast, okay? Same with if you want a really strong two-step, you wanna do two-step variations. You need to understand how to shift your weight over your arms so that you can actually have the time and the air and control to do it. Same with if you're doing sweeps. Let's say I'm doing just my basic sweeps like this, okay? If my arm placement is kind of weird and my weight transferring is off, I'm not gonna know where I'm supposed to be at any given moment. You have to tell your body, command your body, no, we are here, everything is here. And I'm ready to spend as much energy as I need to sweep the site to where it needs to go. Boom, okay? All your weight is here. Commit that weight to that position. If you don't commit to that position, your body does not know where it's supposed to go. But if you tell your body where it's going quickly, that's where we get the strong, fast movement. Because when you're doing it very quickly, you do not have time for that doubt, you don't have time for hesitation, which is why it's so important to have this weight strong and know where your weight's supposed to be. So go to the position, figure out your movement you want to do, and commit your weight to one spot. Which is gonna go into the second to last one, which is not doing full out drills, okay? So I see a lot of people, I'll give them like this drill for instance, okay? Like this. And they drill it, and they get pretty good with it. But let's say they want their steps to be like very fast. Okay, or they want their CCs to be super quick or whatever, but they're not doing the drills that I give them super full out. How is that gonna translate into the movement that they want? I want, I want to kind of throw this at you guys really quickly. If you do your drills full out, like crazy full out, when you translate that into your moves, it's gonna make the movement super easy. Hard drills, easy moves. Easy drills, hard moves. The harder you go in the drills, the easier the movement will be. The easier you go in the drills, the harder the movement's gonna be. So do your drills very hard, okay? Full out, don't go easy. If your drill does not look like this, go harder, go back to it, do it full out. Do your drills as if they're the power moves, as if they're the biggest pull up, your signature move, whatever you want. Do the drills strong. Because again, if I'm doing my CCs like this, full out, then when I do it however I want in battle, in competition, in show, it's gonna come out naturally like that. But it won't, especially under pressure, if you're doing it kind of like, okay, 10 CCs, whatever. Don't do it like that. Drill it full out, okay? Put your full energy into it. On top of that, do the full drill. Don't cheat the drill. Don't chop the drill. If the drill is to go back here and like all the way straight and then in, do that. Because then when you do it slowly like this and then you start going quicker like that, then when you go very quick, it's still gonna have that same motion but smaller. 
Because obviously when you go quicker, things go a bit smaller usually, okay? Because you're going faster and faster in the movement, everything kind of gyrates in and bends in and, and morphs into a smaller ball so you can go faster and faster and faster. So if your form is super big to begin with and super fast and you know how to do it this big and this wide, when you go in, it's gonna go into a nice clean form quickly. But if you start kind of cheating, then it's gonna to go to bad form and messy and look and not look very pleasing to our eyes when we watch it. So make sure you start as wide and as big and overdone, overextended, look silly as possible, and then slowly dial it back. Never start in and go out. Always start overdoing it and then undo, underdo it as you go faster and faster. All right, number 10, last mistake, and that's people focusing on steps two, three, four, and five before they've got number one, okay? Always start from the base and build out of it. You don't have to, okay? But this is just my recommendations. All this is just my recommendations. You don't have to do anything I say, of course. Um, but if you want a solid coffee grinder and you eventually want to go like threading coffee grinders, you want to do all these crazy variations, but you don't know how to do a very solid base coffee grinder, how do you expect to learn the rest, you know? Same with if you want like super dope footwork, but then you don't understand this sweep because you're like, I'm not gonna do that, that's boring. I can do that already. But you don't have it like that, strong. You don't have it clean. You want all these CC variations, but your CC isn't clean, isn't sharp, right? You wanna do all these like threading, weird things like this, but then you can't do this and actually hold a rhythm. Where's the rhythm, bro? You know what I mean? So make sure you're doing the drill and the base foundational movement before the variations. Now I have lots of people, I've taught many people where I don't do this because the reality is if that's gonna sacrifice the person from actually training and being a b-boy or b-girl, don't do it obviously. If they want the variation, give them the variation. It's just they're gonna go backwards and come back to the foundation in the beginning. Now if that's the route you need to go to do this, then do it, right? Whatever works at the end of the day. But the most optimal way to do it is ground up. Build a strong foundation, keep putting stuff on top of it. Don't go the reverse because then you're gonna have your whole thing collapse later and you have to rebuild and rebuild and it's a lot harder because you have all those habits and bad infrastructure built up already that you're gonna have to rebuild around, okay? So the best you can do is really match that base, build out of it, okay? Let it bloom, don't go in reverse or it's gonna wilt, all right? Hope that helped everybody. This is your boy, Make Money For Now Never Crew. If you'd like more tutorials, let me know. Comment down below what we'd like to see next. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff and a lot of me being very passionate, but this stuff um, is very passionate to me. And this is stuff I wish I knew at a younger age because I found it so useful. And this is stuff that I still teach to almost all my students every single day because it goes so deep and there's so many levels to this stuff. And I think that these are all very important things that, I, that I'm speaking about today, which is why I'm speaking so passionate about it. If I wasn't, yeah, I wouldn't be speaking this way. Okay, hope this helped. It was a boy, nice video for now and ever crew. If you like this video, please comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Like, subscribe, smash the button for more videos, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love is love. Love is love.